Hi, this is Robert Quimby, and I'm going to tell you about least squares fitting. So what do you do when you want to fit a model to some data, but no matter what you do, how, how you adjust those model parameters, uh, you just can't seem to find a way to get the model to fit every single point in your data. Well, one thing you can do is you can find the set of model parameters that minimizes the residual uh, between the model and the data, and specifically the sum of the squares of uh, those residuals. And if you do this, this is called least squares fitting. So I'm going to show you some ways to do least squares fitting, specifically in Python, and we're going to make use of this NumPy matrix objects, which are very handy for doing this. Um, and we'll do some fits, and then we will see how to actually en estimate the uncertainty in these best fit model parameters. All right, so the first thing we're going to start with is we're just going to plot some data. And I'm just going to plot two data points. So I'm going to use uh, matplotlib inline, so we show in our, our notebooks here. I'm importing matplotlib as plots. I'm going to change the figure size, make it a little bigger than default. And then I'm going to plot two, uh, two data points. And this is the x positions and the y positions for those data points. And I can plot those as red circles. And it looks like this. So I've also adjusted the limits of the plotting range, which we'll see in a second. So you can see I have two data points here, and if you're an astronomer, you can look at this and say, well, when this uh, data parameter increases, uh, this data parameter increases. And I haven't labeled the axes here, but you know, you could pretend this is maybe time, and this is velocity or some, some uh, correlated uh, parameter. So it looks like there is some correlation here, and you have two, two data points, you're an astronomer, what do you do? Well, you fit a line to it. So if you have two data points and you want to fit a line, you can do this exactly. Um, one way you can do is you can put those data, you can take this equation, y equals nx plus b. You can put in your y values for um, your y and x values uh, for one of these and make one equation. And then you can use the y and x, the second y and x uh, data points, and you can make another equation. So you can take these two equations, and then if you subtract one from the other, you can get rid of b here. You can solve that for m. And then you can determine what your m value is. This is just going to be 3.8 divided by 2.1. That's your m, your slope. And then we can determine what that b value is, that offset, just by taking this first equation here and um, putting in the value for m that we just solved for, like that. So if we do that, we can solve for m and b like that exactly. Right? <clears throat> and we can plot this up now, so this is similar to what we saw before. Uh, one difference is now I'm going to um, create just a bunch of, an array of, of test x values, and we'll see what the predicted y values are given our model. We'll have that, that model x uh, that we just calculated. Uh, sorry, the, the, the model parameters m and b that we just calculated, and the model x that we're uh, looking for. So we can plot that, and we can see indeed that a line does an excellent job of representing these two points. Okay. So that's all fine and good, and we found that nice exact solution. But usually, you're going to have more data points than parameters in your model. So what do you do if this is the case? What do we do, for example, if we add a third point? So I've taken these x values we started with, and I've just added a third data point here. And the y value is there, and I've added that. And we can just plot this up again, and here's what we got. So you can see I picked a, a value uh, for x and y here that does not fall on this line. And this is kind of often what you're going to find. You're not going to get a perfect um, linear relationship with three data points. Usually one of those data points is going to be off this line by some amount. So what do we do in this case? How do we fit this, this line here? We still want to find, we, we still believe, let's say, that there is a linear relationship here. because so we're, we're astronomers and we look at this and you can kind of say, you know, I can draw a line like that. I could draw a line through those data points. So, so let's do that. What is the, the best slope that's going to, and, and offset, that's going to fit all these data points the best I can do? Well, we're overdetermined. Um, so we have to figure out what we can do. So it turns out there is a, a best way to do that, um, but uh, let, let's let's start by just um, defining the problem here. So we, we in the real world, um, we're going to have um, uncertainties in our measurements, and we might 
have a simple linear relationship in mind, but maybe that's not really the true relationship, and maybe it's just something that we're using because uh, we don't know the truth, and we're just trying to uh, work with the limited data we have. So there's, there's various reasons why this isn't going to fit. Um, so you're not gonna, always going to have these data on the line. So what are you going to do? We're going to find a way to fit uh, even though we are overdetermined. And we can do this, it's possible, uh, if we assume that these deviations from this model that, we pit it, that we've chosen, this, this line in, in the example I showed before, um, if those points deviate from that line uh, randomly, and they do so in a, in a specifically a Gaussian random fashion, then there is actually an ideal solution that we can use to find the best fit parameters. This is the best we can do. I'm not going to prove that to you, but this is true. <clears throat> and that's with least squares fitting. So least squares fitting, again, is simply just minimizing the sum of the square of the deviations from the model. So just if I go back here to this line that we plotted, what I want to do is, I'll, this is what you did by eye already. You see this line here? What do we want to do? Well, we want to move this line up a little bit so that's closer to this data point. And what I'm doing is I'm minimizing the squares of the, the, minimizing the sum of the squares of all these residuals. So these residuals here are zero, but there's a huge residual here. So if we move this line up closer to that, we can reduce this residual. We'll increase these a little bit, but not so as much as this one is deviant right now. So let's find a better way to do this using least squares fit. This again holds if we're random and Gaussian. All right. So how do we do this? Well, we have these data here. Uh, we've added that third point there. And this is the model we, we are going to fit to. We could pick a different model if we wanted to, but we're going to start with kind of the simplest model, just a simple line fit, f simple linear fit. Okay. So we always start down by writing down what our model equation is. It's very important that you know the relationship between these parameters, which, what it is that you're fitting for. And once you do that, then you have some, some model values, like M and B in this case. Those are your model parameters. Those are the values that you want to change to optimize this relationship, to find the best fitting model. So how do we do this? Well, if we're doing this, uh, as I said, in the least squares fa fashion, first thing we have to do is, is calculate what the um, sum of the squares is for a given model. So this is uh, just representing, this is an equation representing what I just said. We want to calculate the sum of the squares, this capital S here, and that's going to depend on what our model parameters are. So how does this work? Well, we're going to take our, our data points, our y values, and we're going to subtract off the model, whatever the predicted values are, uh, for those um, model parameters. We'll square that and we'll sum that up for all of our data points. So in this case, theta of i, that is our model prediction for the ith data point, and that is equal to, since we have a, our, we've chosen a linear model, this is equal to uh, the slope times x i plus b. Okay. So we can write this out here. We can just put in all the numbers we have. We have our three equations. We can put those each in there. We can do uh, take our y value, subtract off our model predictions, square them, add them all together, and that is the sum of the squares for any given m and b. We can now put in any m value, any b value, and we'll get different um, sums here. And now what we want to do is we want to find um, the best value. So first we can simplify this. You can work that out um, if you have uh, have the time. <laughs> uh, it's, it works out to this. We have m squared terms and b squared terms and mb terms and b and m and it's, it gets pretty messy. But you can work it out exactly. And now we just have to minimize this. So we want to minimize this uh, square sum, the square of the sums here. So we want to find the m and the b that minimize this. And uh, if you recall your math, and you know how to do this, we need to take partial derivatives. So if we take um, a derivative and, and find where it goes to zero, uh, that is going to be the optimum. That's where it's going to be minimized. So we take the derivative of s with respect to m and the derivative of s with respect to b. These are partial derivatives of s with respect to m, partial derivative of s with respect to b. Um, and we can work out what that is, and then we just have to set these to zero and solve for m and b. And that'll give us the optimum solution. So we can do this. 
and I'll just save you a little time here. This is what that is. We can solve this. Uh, these, we have two equations in here. These are both equal to zero. Uh, so we can solve this very similar to how we did before. Um, and if you do that, um, this is what you find for M, this is what you find for B, and if I actually run this now, we can get these parameters. So the best value for M, in the least square sense, is 2.256, and for B it's minus 1.18. So we can plot this, and we can see if we agree that this is the best fit just by looking at it. And here we go. So now we can see what ap happened is just what we wanted to. This, this line here now has a steeper slope than before. It gets closer to this top point. And it's farther away from these points. It used to fit these perfectly, but if you look at that, it's probably more um, uh, appealing to the eye than it was before. It's a much better fit uh, by eye. Even though it doesn't fit any of these single data points at all, it doesn't go through any of the data points, but, but it goes closer um, uh, well, it minim I should say it minimizes the sum of the squares of the residuals from those data points. That's what least squares fitting is doing. Okay, so that's the process if we have three data points and we're fitting a line to it. Um, what if we had 100 data points? Well, we could go through this whole exercise that we just did, do all that algebra, take those derivatives, set them to zero, do some more algebra, uh, and then find the parameters. Um, but that's a lot of work. And if, when things are a lot of work like that, you should start looking for a better solution. And of course there is one. We can use matrices. Um, so first thing to, to realize is that uh, we can take these three equations that we've been working with, 2.1 equals 1.3 m plus b, 5.9 equals 3.4 m plus b, 13.5 equals 6.4 m plus b, these three equations, and we can turn them into a single equation using, ma using matrices. All right. How do we do that? Well, we just define a column matrix Y, which has the Y values. And we define a, um, a, a matrix with two columns and three rows to define the X values. And then we define P as our, a matrix with our parameter values in it. And if we've done this, then we can now just solve for p. That's all we have to do. Um, I'll show you in a second. Actually, maybe I'll go to that now. I skip down here. I just want to re remind you of how matrix multiplication works. OK, so if it's not familiar to you, this is how matrix multiplication works. You take one matrix, let's call it, it has um, two rows and two columns, A, B, C, D, and another two by two matrix, W, X, Y, Z. And if you multiply these together, this is what you get. And the way you figure this out is in this output matrix, in the first row and the first column, you take the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix, and you multiply those um, piece by piece. So A times W, B times Y, you add those together, that's your first element. And then for the uh, first row, second column, you take the first row and multiply it by the second column in the second matrix. So AX plus BZ, like that. And same thing down here. So if you want to do the second row, um, first column, you just take the second row here and the first column here. And likewise, second row, second column, take the second row, second column. And if you want to know more about this, you can check uh, matrix multiplication. Uh, there's some links here. All right, let's go back where we were now. So we have to solve for P now, that's what we want to do. So we're starting with this equation, X times P equals Y. These are matrices now, so we can't just divide both sides by X. That does, that's not how matrices work. If you remember your matrix multiplication, um, or your matrix operations, I should say, what you can do is you can start by multiplying by the transpose of x on the left side of both of these. If you do the same thing to each side of the equation, then it's still an equation. Uh, it's still an equality. So we're multiplying by the transpose of x, right? And if you do that, of course, um, the goal here is to um, get rid of this um, parameter over here. 
um, but we can't just the reason why we can't just do the, the straight division by x here is because x and y are, are could be different sizes. Remember in our example, y was a, a single column matrix and x was a two column matrix. So it's not defined what, what division means in that sense. So what we have to do is we have to make the matrices square so that we can do um, kind of standard operations on them. So this is what's making it square here. Make, multiplying by the transpose, this makes this a square matrix. And then we can take the inverse of that well, I'm using minus one here is not one divided by, this is actually the matrix inverse of this um, product here. If we multiply a, a matrix, shown in parentheses here, by this other matrix, which is its inverse, this turns into one. So we multiply both equation, both sides of the equation by that, this turns to one, and that of course leaves P equals this. So this is the solution um, to the, the um, to the equation for P. We've solved now for P. And I want to point out that we we didn't actually assume anything about X and Y in this equation. We just we just assumed that this this relationship was was obeyed. And that means this is a general solution. This doesn't work this isn't limited to the, the specific case that we're looking at now. This is the solution for um, any equation that we can express like this. And that's important. We'll see what that means later. So to do this, we're actually going to do this now uh, using matrices in um, Python. Um, but I want to first point out that there is something called a NumPy matrix object, but it's actually different than the NumPy array objects. So I want to introduce that. It's not the same thing. So before we've created a 2x2 two two NumPy array, like so. We can create, uh, put square brackets here to create a list, and then inside that we can make a list of lists, and that first one we can say 1 comma 2, so the first row of our matrix, and then the second row 3 comma 4, like that. And if we do this, you can see we're defining a, a list with lists in it, and when we pass it to, to the NumPy array uh, function, it gives us a NumPy array output, which is going to be a 2 by 2 uh, array. The matrix, NumPy matrix objects have a similar uh, creation, so we can pass actually the same thing. I'm just going to cut and paste this here, just like that, and that'll work the same way. So we'll now if I run this cell, you see we've created a 2x2 two two array, and we've also created a 2x2 two two matrix, and they look pretty much the same when you just print it out like this. Uh, we can take these arrays uh, and the matrix, and we can multiply each of those by 2. So just like you can multiply an array by 2, you can multiply a matrix by 2 to scale it. And if we do that, you can see that the results are the same. All right. We can then take uh, the array, and we can add it to itself, and the matrix and add it to itself. We run this, you can see we can get the same thing. So, so far everything seems the same. We're, we're, the NumPy array objects and matrix objects appear to be the same. But here's the key difference, multiplication. When you do um, multiplication of an array, and you do multiplication of a matrix, they do different things. So if I run this here, you can see that for the array, it's doing element by element. It's taking the first element in the first row and multiplying it by the first element in the first row, and the second element in the second row, second element in the second row, like that. It's doing that type of, of uh, operation. But the matrix, this is doing matrix um, arithmetic, or matrix multiplication, which is what we just uh, talked about. So um, it's taking the, the elements in the first row, multiplying it by elements in the first column, adding those together, and getting that first value there. So keep this in mind. Uh, I might uh, use the wrong word sometimes, but hopefully you can uh, appreciate that NumPy arrays and NumPy matrix objects are different. So we want NumPy matrix ob objects. We already saw how to do this. And if we have them, then it's actually pretty straightforward uh, to do least squares fitting. Uh, so again, we have this model we've adopted. We were saying y equals mx plus b. All we have to do is express it in this form here. And to do that, we just need to collect our y values in a column matrix our x values, 
in a matrix that has the first column as our x value and the second column is 1 and then our parameters m and b. And remember we need these ones here because we're going to take this row and we're going to multiply by this column and we want those b values here. So we want x0 times m plus 1 times b. x times m plus b for each one of these rows. So that's where those ones come from. And if we have that set up uh, then we can uh, do this cross fitting. So let's see how we do that. So we're going to create now, this is a capital X here, we're going to create a capital um, X to represent a NumPy matrix to hold the data. So I'm going to use list comprehension here to create a list of lists and each uh, entry in this list is going to be a list that has um, our X value, the ith X data points, it's going to have one, all right? because we want to make that um, two column matrix and so this is, we're going to have each one of those for each xi in x, because x is our data. If I run that, we're good. And the same thing for y are very similar, we're going to do a numpy matrix and again we're going to make a list of lists because we want a column matrix. We don't want a row matrix, we want a column matrix, so it has to be a list of lists. And this one's just going to have uh, the yi value in each row. And we're going to do this for yi in y. And recall how list comprehension works. This will make a list of lists, pass it a number matrix, and then we'll have a column matrix. Okay. And so the last thing we need to do is we need to solve for p. And we just showed a little bit ago how to do that. And go back um, real quick and show this. We just need to do this equation here. So we just need to take the transpose of x, multiply by x, take the inverse of that product, multiply that by the transpose of x, and multiply by y. If we do that whole thing, then we will have our p-values. So we'll go back now to here and we'll type this in and this is what that equation looks like in um, Python. So we want to take the transpose of x, so it's x dot capital T multiplied by capital X and to take the inverse of it, so if we just do this in parentheses that'll do the multiplication and it'll create that nice square matrix and the inverse of it we just say dot i and i is for inverse here. And then we're going to multiply that by the transpose of x, x dot capital T, and multiply that by our y matrix. And we can run this, and that's it. We solve for p. Uh, we can actually go ahead and print that out just to show you. We get the same values as we got before, 2.256 and minus 1.18. Same things we got before. Now that should be pretty amazing. I mean, we just did um, a very simple matrix operation and we got these exact same values that we got before. And before, remember, we did a lot of algebra and we did some, um, some derivatives we took. So the amazing thing is that all of that we did, all of that is mathematically equivalent to this one simple line here. And that's the power of using matrices. All that's the same, it's all contained here. And now, we can use this generically. This, there's nothing in here that assumes we started off with, a, uh, with, with three data points, or four, or five, or a hundred. As many data points as we have, this, this equation will work. And as we'll see, uh, we can actually fit different models to this. We don't have to just fit a linear model, we can fit more advanced models. So what if we did have additional parameters in a model? What if it wasn't a simple linear fit, but what if it was uh, like a quadratic. Well, it turns out that this same equation here, if you can express it like this, then you can solve for p the exact same way we just did. Right? So what if we have a quadratic? What if we're trying to fit not just y equals mx plus b, but y is a times x squared plus bx plus c? This is a much more, um, much, um, more advanced uh, equation here, but we can do it no problem with the same uh, formula um, the same formula, um, the same thing we just did. 
where we just make our Y matrix. Now our, our capital X matrix is a little bit different because we have one, two, three terms. So we have one, two, three columns and one, two, three parameters. And if you do the multiplication, the matrix multiplication, you can see that you can recover this equation. So now we can re represent as many of these as we want. So we can do the fit and we'll be good to go. <clears throat> so, uh, the last thing we want to get into in this uh, tutorial is we want to talk about how do we um, figure out how well th this model is, is, is fitting the data. Um, and specifically, we want to know what the uncertainty is in our model parameters. So how much could we tweak those model parameters and still get a reasonably good fit? Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually figure out what our predicted Y values are so we can compare those to what our actual Y values are. So this is simple to do. All we have to do is we have to take that X matrix we've made and multiply it by our parameters P, our parameter matrix, and that gives us our predicted Y values. That's it. So I can actually show you, um, just print this out. And so these are the values that it thinks we should have. And these are the values that we actually do have. So this 1.75 is what we're expecting, 2.1 is what we actually had. So there's not perfect, there's some residuals here. So let's, let's calculate what those residuals are. So I'm gonna create a matrix dy, which is gonna be the actual data points we have minus the model y that we predict we should have given our best fit parameters. And we'll see what dy is. So you can see we're getting close, but it's it's not perfect, obviously. Okay. So now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to actually calculate how close, um, what the typical de deviation is between our model and the data. So the way we can do this is we're going to calculate what's called the variance. And for those of you that have studied your statistics, the variance is equal to the square of the standard deviation. So we're going to calculate this for uh, the data in our model. So the first thing we need to do is just count how many data points we have. We know it's three, but just more generically, I can show you how to do this. We take that X matrix and X has a shape uh, parameter and the zeroth value is the number of, um, number of rows we have. And that is how many data points we have. We have one row for each data point. So M is now our number of data points and then we can also calculate how many model parameters we have. And we just take P and use its shape uh, attribute and take the zeroth value of that because we have one row uh, in our P matrix for each one of our model parameters. As as M or B or ABC, whatever it was, that's going to be N. Okay. So then we can calculate the, the sample variance. And the way we can do this is we want to take those uh, dy values, those residuals we have, we want to square them and we want to um, add them together so we get one number and we'll divide it by our um, number of data sam our number of data points minus our number of um, model parameters. So we want to divide by the number of degrees of freedom we have in our model. So we can do this straightforward. We just take uh, we can use, use uh, matrix multiplication or matrix uh, operations to do this. So if we take our dy and we transpose it and we multiply that by dy, if you think about what this is doing, this is giving us uh, some of the squares right there. That's the sum of the squares of our residuals. And we can divide this by our number of uh, degrees of freedom which is just M minus N. If we run that, we'll see that the sample variance is 0 0.5. So that's kind of the typical offset between the model and the, um, and the data points. Okay. So what we can actually do now is we can actually plot uh, the data points that we've been plotting before and add some error bars. So we'll use this error bar function here uh, from plot. I'll just plot this up here. And we can see that we, ha we have our best fit model still shown in blue here. We have our data points. And now I'm adding error bars. And the size of this is just going to be the 
um, size of the standard deviation of the sample. So the sample variance, again, is the square of the sample standard deviation, so I just take the square root of that. Uh, the sample variance is technically a matrix, so I'm taking the zeroth row and zeroth column. It's just, it's got one element in it, but we can do zero comma zero to access that. And then it's going to plot error bars that are that big on top of our data points, and we can see how well that agrees with the line. And we see that actually, yes, it's, uh, uh, if we include error bars that big, um, then uh, it's a pretty good, the model is a pretty good representation of those data. All right, so the final thing we want to do now is we want to actually get the uncertainty in the model uh, parameters themselves. It's so not just the uh, standard deviation of the sample. We want, the, we want to understand those parameters, the slope and the offset, how well those uh, are determined, what the uncertainty in those could be. So the way we're going to do this uh, is we're going to actually start with that sample variance we calculated and we're going to do something very a similar operation on that X matrix that we just did to get the um, um, to make it square and then we're going to take the diagonal of that so I'll just write this out we'll maybe explain this a little bit more later uh, in, a, in another uh, video but the, the answer here is we're going to take the um, just do this sample var we've defined we're going to multiply that by NumPy diagonal, uh, diagonal, and that is just the diagonal elements in this matrix that I'm going to define here, which is, um, I don't need that, just uh, x dot t, I take the transpose of x, multiply by x, I do need that, I do need those parentheses, don't I, because I want to take the inverse of that, and that's it. So I'm taking uh, my X matrix, I'm making it square, and I'm taking the inverse of that, and that um, is giving me a relationship between the, un the uh, uncertainty in my model parameters and the, the sample variance. So I just multiply the sample variance, scale it, and then I can take the square root of this, and I'll get the parameter sigma values. And so now I can actually print out my final answer, my slope with uncertainty. And to do this, I first want to take my best fit model parameters. And if I take um, that P, that's on my matrix, and it has an attribute called A1, that'll give me a, an array, one dimensional array that has all the information in P in it. And the first value is the slope, second value is, is the offset. So this will just pull those out for me. And I can do the same thing for the, the p-sig that we just calculated, lowercase p. So I can get the uncertainty, and then I can print out the um, best fit slope and offset and its uncertainty, and there we go. So we have 2.256 as before, and 2 point, uh, sorry, minus 1.18, and this is the uncertainty in the model parameters. Okay, so if you'd like to know more about least squares fitting, um, a nice reference to, to get you started at least is this uh, least squares in chi-square uh, for the budding aficionado um, that was put together by Carl Heilis at UC Berkeley. So you can take a look at that, and there's other references I'm sure you can find on the web, and you can play around with least squares fitting with uh, fitting lines and quadratics, and uh, enjoy.